I became good friends with a Yidler from Russia who was never five years in prison and then ten years in Siberia. And he came back and never one foot was frozen off. It was very crazy. I met him at a concert and I walked up and said hello to him and the lady next to him says to him, says to me, he doesn't understand Hebrew, he's just one day here from Russia. I see his shine if I want corner the world to the other. I think I told you the story. Doesn't matter. I'd serve a mitzvah. He was never in a shul. He was just he just wanted to be a Jew but he didn't know what it is. The next Shabbos he came to the Holy War and someone came who spoke Russian to him. They called him up. Josh was there. Josh called him up to the Torah. We called him up to the Torah and the Mamish fainted. You know? He didn't know that something so beautiful existed that a Jew can be called up to the Torah, you know? I mean, I'm called up all my life. I never fainted. He was so sensitive, you know? Anyway, I come back and he says to me, Borshem is getting married to a girl from Kiev. So I asked him, uh, asked him, uh, anybody's making a wedding for you? He says, uh, uh, you know, we'll have a little wedding. I said, listen, I adopted you as my brother, at least let me do one thing for you. Listen to this. We made the wedding one o'clock at night. It was Monday before Rosh Hashanah, one o'clock at night on the beach in Tel Aviv. I went to all the big hotels, Sheraton, Hilton Plaza, all the big hotels to throw down psychedelic lights to the beach from 12 o'clock on, you know. And, uh, you know, the hotels, the really sweet people, you know, Paul and Sila from Russia, had one foot, because it was frozen up in Siberia, getting married, Roshan, and neither of them have anybody in the world, you know. And, um, I mean, they were ready to send down, I mean, food for two million people, you know, whatever there was. Especially those lights were going on from 12 on. Mm -hmm. And all the people who walked down on the beach or on the boardwalk, they asked what's going on in our oh, wedding, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so I want you to know something, you know, this is not even an exaggeration. I asked people, do you know that Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and the four mothers were here? The wedding? It was clear to anybody, everybody that was there. You know? Everybody could swear, but Mama, she knew that. There were no two ways about it. I asked the Chava, was it clear to you? I mean, did you know that Elijah the Prophet was there? And I'm telling you, every person there, the lowest to the highest, says I could swear that the living God, that Elijah the Prophet was here. I mean, the holiness of that wedding was so awesome. You know, I was just. Anyway, after the wedding was over, we made a little fire by the beach, it was much by the water. And um, I said to everyone, tell us one good story about Siberia. This is tell you my favorite story. The favorite story is that he says, I was there for 10 years. The first five years I was all alone. That means, not God forbid that I wish it on any non-Jew, but I was all alone. I was the only Jew in the concentration camp. And if you want you alone, who will remind you of Pesach, who will remind you of Shabbos? So you just, you're dead anyway. After five years, there was an exchange of prisoners. It says we walked for two weeks down in Siberia, in cold Siberia. Half of us died and some of us remained. <clears throat> the same from the other camp. There was supposed to be an exchange of prisoners of two camps. And, uh, okay, finally we meet, and it was Mamish death penalty to talk to each other. In both camps, you know, those prisoners were walking around like this in a circle, and they were walking around in a circle like this. Suddenly, one of my brothers in the back walks behind me, says, don't turn around, because it's Mamish death penalty even to talk to each other doing this. They're just not permitted to talk to each other. And Mamish God stand there with guns, you know. Crazy. So he says that, um, what do I say? Walks behind me and says, Don't turn around, I have to talk to you. Listen to me, he says, In the other camp, there's also one Jew who stayed for five years, has not seen a Jew yet in five years. And 
He says, even if both will be shot, you and him, it's worth it. He has to talk to you right now. He says, I look around and I see that from the other camp, I see somebody's trying, walking around in bigger circles, right? I see someone's trying to get close to me. And suddenly I see this heathen in front of me. And suddenly I forgot about the guns, about the guards. <clears throat> I said to him, you know, I haven't seen a Jew in five years. And the other year, he says, you know, I haven't seen a Jew in five years. He said to him, what do you want to tell me? He says, do you know what tonight is? I says, I forgot counting a long time ago. He says, do you know tonight is Yom Kippur? And I said to him, you know something? I'm not religious. I have never been in a synagogue. I know a little bit about Yom Kippur. But I don't know any prayers. The other one says to me, you know something? My father was a chazan of Kishina. And I was sitting and singing with my father all the time. I said to him, could you sing me one prayer? So he says, you know, I don't think I have a voice left. I haven't sang in five years, but I'll try. He says, he had the most beautiful tenor in the world. The most beautiful tenor started singing. 